Katia v5 boolean operations. So as we can see over here, we have a trim. And that trim will contain a body with a padded cylinder over here. So the main advantage of using boolean operations, in this case, we have a trim definition over here. We see that all the elements colored with pink will be deleted. And after that, we're going to have a compound object that will make use of both of those two part bodies. So let's design this from start to see exactly how to work with Boolean operations. So I will create a new part. I will enable all of those planes and I will start a sketch in the X and Y plane. Initially, I want to draw over here an axis. I will also add 200 millimeters for that one. We see that this is vertical. So the axis is properly aligned. I will also position it to be coincident with the vertical axis. And we're going to see that the line will now be fully defined. That means it will be in green. Now, starting with the profile tool, I will start create the profile that will become the body of the main part using a shaft. So over here, I will go with a section like this. Afterwards, I will make those um, lines to be parallel. And we are going to end the profile with something like this. Again, those two should be parallel. Afterwards, the profile should go all the way over here. Keep in mind that if you don't position it now, we can always go back and constrain it. So don't worry about that. Usually I like to design parts like this. So I usually just uh, sketch them and afterwards I will add those values. So for example, the bottom section over here, I will make this to be 30 millimeters. I will make this 15. And that will mean that this should be somewhere like 20. I will also add the distance between those to be 10 millimeters. In this case, if I add that 10 millimeters directly, we're going to see that the profile will change. Therefore, I will add a distance over here of 100 millimeters. And now let's also make this and that to be on the same level. So make those two constant. And now add the value of 10. And again, we're going to see how those will be changed over here. Therefore, I will just add the distance to be 8.5 for that. I will go for the same value over here, so 8.5. Again, make those two constant, so they will be on the same level. And we still have some values to add over here in order to fully define this. So Let's make this section uh, 30. And we're going to see over here that with this profile, we're going to need to add some additional constraints. So this top section should be 20. This should be 20 as well. In this case, we're going to see that with 20, it will jump. But I will position this to be at 200 millimeters over here. And now that should be 20. And we also have the top part. I will make this larger. So let's say 40. with 15, just like the, the first one, you're going to see that over there, we're going to have an over constraint. So the only constraint that we should add is for this edge all the way over here to the axis. This should be 280. And 
Now the sketch will be fully defined. We can exit the sketch and I will add a shaft. Uh, so that will go 360 for the case study part. I will just add a fillet on all of those areas where those two will be merged over here. So we see those four inner edges. I will go with the value of 10 in this case. Afterwards, on the top section, I will do a cutout. So I will use directly the hole feature over here. We could also go to something similar with pocket, but I will use the hole, position it on the top surface, go to the position in sketch, and over here we have to constrain that point. So I will make the point to be on the same axis. So select the point, select the X axis, go to coincidence and make those coincident. And I will add a distance to the outer circle of 15. Afterwards, if we're going to leave the sketch, we're going to see how that hole will look like. So I'll just go for a simple for the type. I will uh, choose a simple hole. And over here, we're going to have the diameter of 10 and the depth of 10. I will click on preview. You're going to see that a depth of 10 in this case uh, will not go past. Therefore, I will go with a depth of um, 15 because as we recall, that was the depth that we given to the top section of the of the shaft over here. Okay, so we have the hole defined over here. I will now make a um, circular pattern of that hole. So I will select it, go over here, circular pattern. We're going to have the reference, the top surface. And for the parameters, I will go for a complete crown and a total of eight instances. The one over here on the left side, I will click on that. That means Katia will no longer multiply that as well over here. So I can just click OK. We're only going to have seven instances. So three at the top, three at the bottom, and the one that we started with. And I will do a cutout over here. So I will create a new sketch. I will just go with a rectangle. Again, I will create this, um, add some default uh, values. For example, uh, afterwards I added 300 for the length and 50 for the for the width of the triangle. And now I just want to center this. I can do that multiple, uh, let's say, approaches. So I can either add a value over here of 150 millimeters, or I can select the top edge, the bottom edge, select the axis, go over here, and I'm going to be able to go for symmetry. You can use symmetry if you don't use specific value. It will be easier. But usually in Katia, you want to use specific values. So I will make this, uh, say, 240 millimeters. I will go to the other side, so 260. And I will do a pad. I can go over here with up to next, and that will automatically clear that top section of the flange. Okay, so this will be the first body. Now, if I will just create the inner part within the same part body, let's take a look at what will happen. So I will go over here on the X and Y plane. I will flip the normal view so that we have the newly defined cutout over here. This is just for orientation, so the same, um, the same features will be added. I will just add a circle like that. Let's see, a radius of 100. I'm going to slightly move this. And I also want to add some specific dimensions to this one. So 105 
we're gonna see that it will clip the top side over here and also the bottom side and I also want to have another inner radius of 70 in this case if they are not fully defined we can just make them to be concentric as we can see the inner circle has uh, now been aligned okay so this will be the inner section i will go with the pad i will go with this up to next um up to surface and i will indicate the cutout that we had over here and as you can see it will have some um okay so up to plane we see that with up to plane it went this is quite uh odd because even though up to plane or up to surface since this surface is planar it should work but it worked with up to plane and i will just click okay and now we're gonna see how those so the how, how the shaft and how the pad will um, overlap over here <coughs> okay and now this is where we add the boolean operations if you just try it like this so within the same part body i will go to insert boolean operations and we're gonna have the union trim you're gonna see that we need to select the body to trim so in this case it will be part body one but we're gonna see that Katia will give us a warning, so you can't use this feature. This is because we only have a, sim a single part body within the part. Therefore, in order to fix this, we're gonna need to go to insert part body. This will give us a secondary body over here. And now we can just drag and drop the pad feature into the newly defined body. And that will be docked over here underneath it. And now we can go with insert, boolean operations, union trim. Now, if I will select the second part body, we're gonna see that we're gonna have this outline with red. And now we can specify what exactly do we wanna keep and what we don't. So faces to remove. I want all the inner section of this uh, cylinder to be removed. So keep in mind that those will be with pink. So we have those that will be removed. We can also select all the elements over here. So including this boundary. And if I'm going to click preview, we're going to see how that cutout will look like. And this is what we intend. So faces to remove. I'm going to click OK. And now we see that the body too has been docked underneath the trim and we still have just a single part body over here but what is important is that now we can um, go over here and this will be considered to be the same part body so that means if i will do for example another cutout over here i will just do two circles so i will choose the radius over here to be eight and I will make another one over here at the bottom. I will slightly offset this from the from the bottom. If I will go now with pocket, I can go to up to surface. I can select that surface. It won't allow me to select that surface since I also have one at the top, but I can go with up to next. And up to next will automatically find the next surface area. So we see over here, this will be the cutout direction. So along the X axis and at the bottom, it will look like this, but um, we still need to adjust it since it will go past to the, the bottom um, section. So I will just slightly align that over here. I can also add a, di a dimensional constraint. So all the way over here. I will make this 11. Let's leave that sketch, see the preview. You're gonna see how at the bottom it will no longer go over here with up to next since the projected surface will remain over here. If you want to, you can also further adjust it. So for example, I can make this uh, 10. 
and we're gonna see with 10 it will look like this so we're gonna have more equal spacing over there and at the top we can do the same if you don't wanna pass through that we can just reposition this a little bit So currently this is almost 22, I will go with 23. And we're gonna say that with 10, 23, we're gonna be right on the edge over there. So again, depending on your design intent, you can always change that. But what is important is that since this has made use of uh, union trim and that body, we can work on the resulting element the same within part design even though the parts have been created within different part bodies. Okay, so I hope that you find this video useful. I will position a similar video on the left side. I will add the Katia V5 tips and tricks to the top, and I will also position a subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.